B&M, or Bolliger Mabillard, is a coaster manufacturer dating back to the 1990s, creating some of the smoothest and most reliable roller coasters that the industry has ever seen. Whether that be the innovative and popular inverted coaster, to the newer models like the surf coaster, the company has a wide portfolio of different roller coasters that provide smooth and fun experiences. B&M is one of the leading manufacturers in the coaster industry, usually having multiple coasters open up each year. Most of the top theme parks across the globe have at least one of these quality roller coasters from B&M. The big thing is when you think of B&M is that you're going to have a comfortable and smooth ride experience with very little complaints. They aren't the most intense rides in the market, but they aren't the most boring either. There are a few intense and fun B&Ms like Fury 325, Orion, and Mako, and probably a few more that I can't think of right now. Their rides are just simply fun. I always look forward to riding a B&M when I visit parks because I know that they're going to be smooth and fun rides. But recently, my experiences on B&Ms haven't lived up to the smooth quality attractions that I once thought they were. Now, I'm not talking about B&Ms like Rougarou or Vortex, which are understandably showing their age among their ride experience. What I'm talking about is their coasters that have opened up within the last 10 years. Let me take you back to when I first started to notice this issue among some of the newer B&Ms that I've ridden. The first coaster I began to notice this new uncomfortable ride experience among B&Ms was Banshee. Banshee was one of my favorite inverts, with it being my home park, I would ride that multiple times each visit because it was that good. The layout is one of the best. It has smooth transitions and speed which make you feel like you're flying through the inversions. But within the last two years or so, whenever I would ride Banshee, I found it to be one of the most uncomfortable experiences in the park. On the valleys of the ride, it felt like it was just aggressively rattling my bones and shaking my body uncontrollably. The vest restraints also get pretty tight which don't help, but that isn't the topic of this video. It's still a good ride, just not as re-rideable as it once was. I usually come off with some sort of headache and have to take a few minutes to relax and recover before heading to ride something else. This isn't a poor maintenance issue. In fact, Kings Island is one of the best parks at keeping their rides maintained to have a comfortable ride experience. It's a manufacturer issue. I didn't think much of it at the time, however, because Banshee is now 10 years old, so it's not like it's a brand new ride, but it's still relatively new. The second B&M that I noticed this on, however, was only one year old when I wrote it, and that was Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. A brand new dive coaster that I expected to be glass smooth like any other brand new B&M, but I was wrong. When I rode it, it felt like the coaster just wanted to aggressively shake all of the riders on some of the transitions of the ride. It's not something you feel during the entire ride experience, but just around 3 or 4 moments where you're exiting an element and you just think to yourself, that wasn't comfortable or fun. Now that doesn't take away too much from the ride experience, but it does leave you wondering why so much shaking on a coaster that's only a year old. Again, after riding this, I did start to form an opinion on the new B&M, but it wasn't enough to motivate me to make a full video on the issue. I'm sure that other manufacturers have a coaster come out every once in a while with an element that isn't profiled how they want, or just a moment that wasn't as smooth as they imagined it would be, but generally they can fix that on the next edition and it doesn't become a problem. So I took the optimistic route, brushing it off and hoping that their next coaster would be a much smoother ride like some of their coasters of the past. However, this idea would soon be proven wrong as well. About a month ago, I planned a last minute coaster trip to a park that I'd never been to before. That park was Dorney Park in Allentown, Pennsylvania. A Cedar Fair park who deserved a new coaster after a long period of no new major thrill rides, and they got their well-deserved addition for 2024. Iron Menace, Dorney Park's brand new B&M dive coaster, opened to the public on May 10th, 2024. I visited three months after the coaster opened, and I have to compliment the park on how amazing the area looks and the theming for the ride is the best in the park by far. As I walked up to the ride, I could see just how much time and effort the team at Dorney put into this. The queue even had theming, which isn't common among Cedar Fair coasters. I walked up the stairs and had probably a two minute wait at most. The ride attendant asked which row I wanted to ride in, and I asked for the front just to experience the main element of a dive coaster, and that's the drop element. I got super lucky and got the center seat of the front row and got ready to ride. 
The vest restraint wasn't too restrictive at first, which was great. We started up the lift hill and I had high hopes for the ride, disregarding my previous experience on Dr. Diabolical. We started over the edge of the drop and stayed there for what felt like 7 to 10 seconds, and it was by far the best dive element on any dive coaster that I've ever ridden before. The negative G's on the drop were fun to experience as well. The ride was non-stop and had intense moments, but was generally a smooth ride, and I didn't understand the complaints about the ride experience that I'd previously heard. I got off and immediately thought that that was the best dive coaster that I've ever ridden. I went in for a second ride and tried the back row. However, this time, I wasn't on the center seat, I was on the far right seat of the back row. We started just like my previous ride. The dive element again was the best, except as soon as we hit the valley of the first drop, I realized I made a huge mistake. The experience flipped from being the best dive coaster to the worst, and my whole body was just shaking and vibrating from the rough experience of the ride. Every moment of G-Force brought the exact same experience. The final turn that everyone talks about was a horrible moment of the ride, which stood out from the valleys that I thought were bad. And to make matters worse, when we hit the brake run, I was being crushed by my vest restraint. The ride that I thought was the best in the park soon turned to be the roughest in the park. And the center seat to the edge seat felt like two different coasters that were built 30 years apart. You can't make a coaster with half of the train have a smooth ride and the other half have a rough ride. It isn't fair to the parks who spend time and money to prepare the ride for guests. I realized that B&M was headed in a rough direction. This was no longer a one coaster issue, but a company-wide issue. I'm not a roller coaster engineer, and I don't have the knowledge to accurately describe the problem, but my guess is that it's either a profiling issue, a wheel or chassis issue, or just a track manufacturing issue, or a combination of all. But something has to be done to fix it. If the rides are this uncomfortable now, I don't even want to imagine what they will feel like in 10 to 20 years. I don't know what the company is doing differently from what they have done in the past when they have nearly perfected the smoothness of a roller coaster. I'm scared for the future of the company if they don't fix the issue soon. The new coasters coming to parks across the world could end up with the same uncomfortable ride experience that can be found on Iron Menace and Dr. Diabolico's cliffhanger. Especially coasters like Raptera, a wing coaster coming to King's Dominion, and any new dive coasters because both the wing and the dive model have seating far out from the track, which just amplifies the vibrations of the train when it passes through those rough and uncomfortable moments. Parks do not deserve to spend all of their money on a coaster that doesn't provide a smooth experience. Take King's Dominion for example, they have worked long and hard to make Jungle X a great immersive themed area for the park with multiple roller coasters and attractions, and they finally spent the money to get a replacement for Volcano. The last thing they are going to want is their brand new coaster, Raptera, to be an uncomfortable ride experience. It is going to draw guests away from the coaster and lower the ridership that they might have hoped for. Eventually, this new B&M rough ride experience is going to have a negative effect on the company if they don't fix it soon. Their reputation will not be as good as it once was, and they could see a drop in the number of attractions they sell in the coming years. I really enjoy the layouts and the coasters that B&M brings to the industry, and I hope they can figure out this issue soon so that they continue to be one of the leading coaster manufacturers, and not turn into a failing company.